Chess friends, hope you are doing well, every time I play chess, I compare my game like the Brighton moon in the sky and today I'll demonstrate some clever traps for white in the Nachmanson gambit, and also the optimal strategy for black to steer clear of these traps. We begin with the Italian game, where white plays e4 e5, knight to f3 knight c6, white develops the bishop to c4 and after black moves knight to f6, white executes the strategic move, pushing the pawn to d4, at this point. Black may mistakenly believe they can capture on d4 first and then take the d4 pawn for free, so black captures on d4, and instead of recapturing or advancing, white executes another unexpected move, castling kingside, this marks the transition into the scotch gambit, now, the pawn on d4 is also up for grabs, prompting black to capture it immediately, which is also the top move recommended by me, if black chooses not to take the pawn and plays something like bishop to c5, you can just advance the pawn. Similarly, if black plays d6 in this position, you'll simply recapture, however, the most common move by black in this position is to capture with the knight, this setup is quite popular in openings, and there are various move orders that can lead to this position, for instance, after e4, e5, you could opt for the bishop's opening, when the knight moves to f6 to attack your pawn, you counterattack with knight to f3, then, after knight to c6 defends the pawn, you make the move d4, and after the pawn takes, you castle, leading to the same position we discussed earlier, now, what's next? Some might consider playing rook to e1, but this video focuses on the Nachmanson gambit, which begins with the incredibly daring move, knight to c3, you might wonder, why give away the knight for nothing. But if black takes with the pawn, they're in trouble, let me explain, after pawn takes, we go for the decisive move, bishop to f7 check, it's another sacrifice, black will need to capture the bishop, and then you follow up with queen to d5 check, there's no way to block this check, so black will once again have to move the king, they have four options, and king to e8 is the most common response, he can also choose to go to e7 f6, or g6. We'll explore all of these and I'll demonstrate some lethal traps in each variation and let me tell you a quote in sudden. Don't lose yourself holding on to someone who doesn't care about you. Let's begin with king to e8, which is what most players would instinctively play, now you'll move your rook to e1 because you're going to win this knight anyway, so let's activate our rook as well, at this point, black could try various moves like bishop to e7, pawn to d6, or even queen to f6, however, your strategy remains straightforward. Exactly, bring out all your pieces and target the exposed king, capture with your rook, develop your bishop, and then bring in your other rook to attack the king from multiple angles, for instance, if black plays bishop to e7, we capture with the rook, and if black then plays d6 to activate their bishop, we attack with our bishop, finally, we create a battery with our rooks to control the e-file and put pressure on the king, as you can see, white is clearly dominating the position, indeed. Even if black plays something like h6 to prevent our bishop from coming here, we can simply capture the pawn, if black recaptures with the rook, then queen to g8 delivers a stunning checkmate, alternatively, if black captures with the pawn, then queen to h5 check, king to f8, we check with the rook, and ultimately, we have the king dancing to our tunes, I give it as a significant 10 point advantages in this position, so back to the position, king e8 wouldn't word. So let's consider king to e7 as an alternative for black, in this scenario, since there's no way for black to block, you can immediately capture with the queen and deliver a check, if black moves to d6, you can attack the king with all available pieces, pushing him toward the side of the board and gaining a decisive advantage, even if black plays king to f6, after bishop to g5 check, black is in trouble, therefore, king to f7 is forced, but then you have knight to g5 check, leading to a favorable position for white. If black moves up, it's a checkmate, so, black has to move down, and then after queen to f4 check, we have numerous attacks that will make it difficult for black to survive. For instance, if black goes here, then queen to f7 check, followed by king to h6, then g4, and you have multiple moves to finish him off, let's say black plays g6, then knight to e6 check, 
If black plays g5, then queen to h5 results in checkmate, exactly, if black blocks with the queen, then bishop to g5 leads to checkmate, so, overall, king to e7 doesn't work well for black. On a different note, if you're enjoying this content, hitting the like button below the video would be greatly appreciated, thank you. If black moves to g6, the same concept applies. Queen to e4 check, if black moves to h5, then g4 results in a decisive checkmate, alternatively, if black goes to f6, they again lose the queen, similar to this, and if black goes to f7, you have the same tactic of knight to g5 check, leading to the same mating patterns as we saw in the previous variation, if black plays king to f6 after queen to e4 check, it is indeed an interesting move, surprisingly, I recommend this as the best move, however, for humans. It's highly unlikely that someone would play this move because it exposes the king in the open, nevertheless, let's take a closer look at this scenario, you're absolutely right, this line, particularly king to f6 after queen to e4 check, is more typical of high level chess moves, it's quite challenging for a human player to accurately find these moves, especially in the heat of a game, so even if black opts for the king to f6 variation, it's unlikely that they will find the exact best moves to secure their king's safety, it's true that in this specific computer generated line, black managed to handle the situation, but in practical games, white typically maintains a significant advantage in the Nachmanson gambit, however, black doesn't need to accept a defeat from the beginning, there are indeed effective strategies for black to neutralize white's attack in this gambit, and I'd be glad to show you two of them, the traps we saw earlier, were when black captured with the pawn. Now, let's examine some tricky lines if black decides to capture with the knight, then I'll also demonstrate how to counter these as black, first, we recapture, so at least we're not down a piece anymore, however, if black gets greedy and takes this pawn, they'll be in trouble, let me show you why, we begin with a rook to e1 check, black will naturally block with the bishop, and then we play knight to g5, adding pressure on the vulnerable f7 pawn, while it might seem like black can simply castle to safety. That's not the case, there's a move here that puts white in a commanding position, and that move is queen to h5, now, we're attacking the pawn and also threatening a checkmate, if black eliminates the knight, you just recapture with the bishop, and surprisingly, the black queen is trapped with no escape route, especially since blocking with the pawn isn't an option due to the pin, now, if black plays d5 instead of castling to block the bishop. Can you find the crushing move here? The game winning move is the astonishing knight sacrifice, forking both the queen and the rook, taking with the king becomes almost necessary, after that, you have bishop to d5 check, and wherever black's king moves, you can use similar ideas as we saw in previous variations, for instance, if black goes to e8, you can exploit the pin and apply pressure, this time with bishop to a3. You can also bring your queen into action like this and eventually launch an attack with your entire army to conclude the game, I am showing a 5.2 point advantages for white in this position doesn't necessarily mean black, has no safe way to deal with the Nachmanson gambit. And let me share another quote with you. What you think, you become, what you feel, you attract, what you imagine, you create. Now in this video, I'll demonstrate two straightforward strategies for black to sidestep these traps and reach a decent middle game position, let's explore it from black's perspective, taking the pawn might seem tempting in this position, but it's actually a significant mistake, so, black shouldn't capture the pawn, instead, the best move is to play d5 immediately, now, since the white bishop is under attack, white will have to move it to b5 giving black time to develop their bishop and then castle kingside, when evaluating the position, black is up a pawn, and the king is also safely castled, the game is nearly equal, making this a solid way to play against the Nachmanson gambit, another effective strategy for black, which I personally favor, is to refrain from capturing the knight and instead play the solid move knight to d6, this move simultaneously attacks the bishop, defends the pawn, and keeps in mind that the knight is still hanging. From this position, white doesn't have many aggressive options, at most, white might give a check with the rook or queen and follow it up with knight to d5 or try bishop to g5, no need to fret in any scenario, 
just stick to this straightforward plan, develop the bishop, trade pieces when the opportunity arises, and promptly castle kingside to ensure your king's safety, this strategy is reliable every time, for instance, let's consider rook to e1 check, as I mentioned, block with the bishop. White's optimal response is knight to d5, you can then capture the bishop, allowing white to capture on e7, and then recapture the captured piece, regardless of what white takes with, if they're setting up a double attack, don't cling to the knight, instead, return it and quickly castle kingside because safeguarding your king is crucial, gradually, you can maneuver your pieces into position, leading to a favorable outcome, this strategy is straightforward and minimizes the chances of errors, additionally, you will have a pawn advantage as black, making it a versatile approach applicable in various variations, here's how to apply this strategy when white begins with a queen check, follow the same approach, block with the bishop, castle kingside, trade pieces when possible, and then gradually activate your pieces, similarly, when white plays bishop to g5, block with the bishop, exchange pieces, develop with tempo, and once again, castle kingside, this strategy is simple yet highly effective. It's puzzle time. In this position, it's white's turn, and you need to find the best move continuation for white, share your answers in the comment section below, and remember, don't forget to like and subscribe for more chess content, see you in the next video, bye bye.